So, where are you headed? Hmm. Not the talkative type, eh? That's okay. Most people I pick up are just waiting for their turn to talk. Want a raisin? They're from my farm. Those things don't agree with you yet. Strange. They're Thompson seedless. Good raisins. We still farm more of those in California than anywhere on Earth. You want to know the clearest evidence that reality isn't real? Raisins and grapes, man. They're the same thing. But they taste disgusting when eaten together. Obvious bug in the program there, right? Memory is a slippery thing. Think about when somebody asks you about this ride later. Assuming you even know where you're going. And get someplace where somebody can ask you. Hey, how'd you get here anyway? They'll ask you. Oh, I itched. And your brain will flash back for a second when you say this. And it'll show you a frozen snapshot of yourself sitting in this car, talking to me like we are right now. But which moment will it actually show you? Will it be this one? Or this one? Or this one? We think we remember how people really were, how our lives together really were. But when we think back to them, even the people we cared about the most, all we're doing is snatching moments out of the air. Just grabbing another raisin out of the box. My wife. She's dead now, but you probably guessed that. Oh, thanks. But you don't look like you're doing so well yourself. Takes one to know one, right? I can always spot someone who's grieving along this highway. They usually stand on the road with a dazed look on their face and their thumb up in the air. No, I don't know you. Just know the type. My wife, if I'm totally honest with you, I don't really remember what she looked like. Remember everything about her, just not her face. Some people have faces that are easy to remember. Doesn't seem fair. Sure. It's not as easy as people think. I'll give you an example. You think you're present in the moment? You've been talking to me for a few minutes now. What color are my eyes? Yep, not bad. But that's just your photographer's eye. Better lucky than good, am I right? Do me a favor and crack the window, would you? That's better. Now, where were we? Yeah, fair number. But after... But after a while, you start seeing the same few archetypes. Archetypes over what you got there. Just a matchbook, huh? I figured it must have been something important. Because the window is still open. 
So, where were we? You got the numbnuts Kerouac fans. You got your autodidact blowhards. They'll talk your ears off. You got a lot of people from Cincinnati for some reason. You got your deadheads trying to get to some concert someplace. And then there's the water bottle person, always worrying that they're gonna run out of water before they get where they're going. Still, <laughs> you're the first hitcher I ever picked up who doesn't have a destination. Copernicus. Well, it seems like the right name for a guy who's traveling the world without knowing where he's going. You just sit back, Copernicus, and invent a language where false statements are impossible. What? You know, when I was a kid, my brother and I used to drive our parents crazy on long drives like this. Our folks wouldn't let us listen to the radio in the car. So we used to make up these songs about food on long drives to pass the time. We had this one with about 30 verses, each about a different kind of grain. There was this one time when we passed a billboard for this new kind of bread. Balach bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. Oh, oh yeah, that drove mom and dad crazy. Come on, join in. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of bala bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of bala bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of bala bread. Actually, I'm beginning to understand my parents' perspective. Getting older is funny. It's like reading a book where less and less happens, but the writing gets better and better. Thanks. I got it from an app. It's this app with philosophical sayings. My wife got it for me, to make me sound smarter. Oh, she had a way with words. Yeah, well, that all sort of depends on which raisin you take out of the box, right? How you spin it. We were married for 37 years. People used to ask us how we managed, being married and all, working off the side of the road together, sharing a little trailer. The truth is, nobody knows if they're happily married. All they know is that it's the thing they've been doing every day for the last 37 years. It's not that simple, Copernicus. Life has a way of chipping away at that certainty. It'd be easier if you had a number assigned to you, a number from one to a hundred, printed on both your foreheads where you could always see it. You would arrive in the mail every year, right after you file taxes. Oh, we're a 71. That couple down the street, the Rosens, they're an 82 this year. Oh, I guess they have it a bit better than us. Some way of knowing. Hmm. There's a photo in that glove box there of us standing in front of our trailer. It was in a magazine. One of those stories about vanishing farmers that always pulls heartstrings with the rest of the country. Well, I never opened the glove box myself. It's kind of a superstition of mine. But help yourself. Hey, where'd you get that? 
That's not her. And that guy there, he looks like you. I don't know. I was gonna ask you the same question, Copernicus. Did he... who gave this to you? Well, I guess it belongs to you. You better hold on to it. What woman? Well, oh, her. Well, hard to say. I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. What's that black thing in the glove box, anyway? See anything interesting there? A windmill, eh? No idea. Why did the raisin take the prune to the dance? He couldn't get a date. <laughs> hey, that reminds me. It's almost 4.30. You'll like this. It's my favorite. I once knew the hostess, Darlene. She used to change the tires on my truck on Highway 51. Welcome to another interstate riddle hour. Here's our first riddle. Keep your eyes peeled, all you blacktop carpetbaggers. I fly, yet I have no wings. I cry, yet I have no eyes. Darkness follows me. Lower light I never see. Need some help? I fly, yet I have no wings. I cry, yet I have no eyes. Darkness follows me. Lower light I never see. Need some help? I fly, yet I have no wings. I cry, yet I have no eyes. Darkness follows me. Lower light I never see. Gatekeeper forever bound. He opens and shuts with a similar sound. Need some help? A gatekeeper forever bound. He opens and shuts with a similar sound. Need some help? Think metal teeth that open and shut. I don't know why I listen to this every day. Damn questions are rigged. I never get them. Says the guy who never knew what pressure to keep his tires at. Hey! Having fun? Want to keep going? Great. Here's another one. Take one out and scratch my head. I am now black, but once was red. What am I? Need some help? Take one out and scratch my head. I am now black, but once was red. Check your backpacks, friends. The answer could be hiding inside. Well done. Okay, here's a tough one. I have four wings, but cannot fly. I never laugh and never cry. On the same spot I'm always found, toiling away with little sound. What am I? Need some help? I have four wings but cannot fly. I never laugh and never cry. 
On the same spot I'm always found, toiling away. Need some help? Round and round we go, people. Need some help? You might need to get your binoculars out to find this object. It's not so close. All right, here's our last riddle. He lies without touching the ground. Oh, come on, Darlene. Need some help? He lies without touching the ground. Damn it, Darlene. I should have tipped her better when she changed the tires. She's been out to get me ever since. Look, she isn't being straight with you, kid. Check the photo, Copernicus. The photo in your bag. Then you'll see. Uh. She's in trouble, Copernicus. You must help her. Ah, things like that happen all the time on this highway. It's nothing to lose your scrunchie over. Kid, I am sorry about your girlfriend. But I had nothing to do with it. It's just the opposite. I was sent to protect you. From yourself. You picked this car every bit as much as I chose to stop for you. You picked this car, picked me, not to feel anything. Kid, just let it go. There's nothing for you down that road. Nothing but hurt. Look, I admit I lied, but only about one thing. Nope. I'm as surprised by that one as you are. Nope. She's dead, all right. That's no lie. Yeah, we've met. Twice, in fact. Sure. You showed up at my trailer park taking photos. At first, I was a bit suspicious, since there were plans to kick us out and develop the trailer park into some kind of shopping center.